There we go. And pop that open. Oh, weird. Did that replace that one? Huh. I'm just going to overwrote it. Huh. Do, 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 do. Here, so don't drag it onto the object. Oh, I should have moved. Damn it. These need to be. Yeah. Like so. All right. And some more fluff. Oh, excuse me. All right. So I'll have the clothing for now. And let's get the rest of the body modeled. And then the hair in. Wider hips and tummy. Okay. And these little sections. All right, looks pretty good. Just a little bit in. Got abs.
Hello, welcome. I am, I do have my Discord open, so I'm seeing the messages you're sending. Welcome to the stream. Hands are a little too small. So it's just way over on the side. Hands really more like that. Right about there. So There. Something like that. All right. Oh, excuse me. Thirty on. And this picture slightly pulled up, but usually it rests in the back. Gotcha. So let's go this one forward. Okay. And just do a quick comparison. So I like the little double fluff where it kind of chink chink has a little sharp point. That looked really good. So let's see if we can achieve that same look here. I could just dissolve that. And then crease. A little bit of fluff right there. To have a few to have a few more distinct points to it, so that's good. Gotcha. Again, I uh, were definitely in the early stages, so, but I appreciate the feedback. Just kind of pop this one up here just so it doesn't carve in too much. About there. Perfect. And then I do think we'll have to start the hair now. Because that's going to be important to feeling out the rest of the, those proportions. We've got some fluff around the ear, too. A little bit in the back. A little bit in the back right there. Okay, so we'll start the hair by doing just kind of an outline. Let it go. There it is. <laughs> it's so hard to see these little points. Uh, Put it right there, slap a subdivision on it, and then just kind of match what we're seeing here. It's got like a little curve. Oops. All right, something like that. The side at least and for the front kind of waves over so we'll take that little piece and scooch it over like that. 
and do a little cut right in the middle, bring that down. And yeah, so it kind of goes over to the side. We can see a little bit more in the back there. So we'll kind of do the exact same thing. Do, do, do. Just bringing this over to make these little curves. Like this. Yeah, this is a good reference here. So we've got like another little swoop, and then another. No clue what's going on, but it's interesting to watch. <laughs> right now we're just trying to find that like, just the right shapes, and then we'll we'll kind of make something similar to the body where it's a, an object or a a surface. But I for hair I really like finding the lines of it first. Um, it just helps. It helps. It just helps. Because <laughs> otherwise it's like just hard to know how it's supposed to all go together. Excuse me. And I'm going to also kind of extrude here to make like a hair line, or something like this that goes to the ears. We'll actually just take this little piece, and duplicate it, and then 0.6 SX negative one, flip it to the other side, and connect. So now we have it's kind of a hair. Where that where it'll meet the scalp. Any more pics of his hair or really any other detail, I can send them. You feel free to send as much, uh, any and all reference. I will take as much reference as you'd like to send. Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, any reference you want to send, I will definitely take. Looks like there's a little tuft here. So um, we'll just do kind of remove it first. Like so. I'm going to rotate it slightly so I can scale it. That. I'm just going to put tuft. And tuft. All right, and then I think we can go ahead and make the surface, at least for the front portion. We'll go ahead and take um, this, do this, take this one. So we're going to say that this is the middle point. Just duplicate it, move it up, and then over. Oh, I got it. I should have just done this. Take this. And extrude it this way. That point six SX zero. So this will be kind of our midpoint for the hair. So do something like that. Just a good start. And then we will do a little cut here. Let's go ahead and just connect these. Boom, boom, boom. 
all wrong, all wrong, all wrong. And though it doesn't show it, I would assume there's probably another little tuft here. Maybe we'll put that on the other side of the ear. And another one. This one will connect. Oh. All right. So there we're starting to make the shell. And do, do, do. Connect those, cut them, connect, connect, raise it up, move it over. So it's kind of a, a front swoop, <laughs> which is a very vague description. A front swoop, like so. Yeah. And we're going to cut there and there. Sorry for shaky cam. This one, we want to go that way so we can connect this side, like that. But then once it gets to here, go that way, connect. Like, I guess it's the same thing. I could have done it either way, but oh well. Boom, 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 boom. I just want a separate one here. And we'll have a little triangle there. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So now that. Oh, gotcha. Um, Actually, delete that, take this section, and extrude it this way. Both of these sections. Extrude, we'll fill that. No, bridge, merge. Boom, 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 boom. Perfect, I just received that reference. Noise. Basically, I realized it's a terrible difference. It's not super consistent things, just the kind of vibe that matters. Some of them choose to do more of an undercut where it's brushed back with gel or something. Forward crest. Forward crest shape better. Can you specify which one you, you mean by that? Or this, where, where you just mean where it's going forward and it's kind of like a point. So kind of like this one that I'm doing relative to where they push it back compared compared to when they push it back. Extrude this one down. Actually, M, collapse, and collapse. There we go. Dingle, dingle. I like the way it's going now. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right, all right, all right. Just a little bit more volume and spikiness. Sporkiness. All right, let's take this one and connect it. Kind of cut it. Move 
to the side. And this one is a point we will use to create one of the next tufts, or maybe both of them, one like this, and then like that, shrink it way down. Good. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this one so then I can close it and make it again. But this time it'll be, it'll end, the tip of it will be a square rather than a point. And that's just a little bit nicer to work with. Noise. Noise. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we could do another smaller little tuft right here. Right here, little tiny curl. Boom, boom. Close, close. And we want to take this one and yeah and then just extrude it perfect okay let's scale it down first like that and we got this little curve curl curval curve curl A perfect. Curl the. <laughs> a curl the. Something like that. <laughs> and we can start sharpening these two. Oops. Perfect. Dissolve that. And let's fill in the back here. Oops, like so. Bow, bow. Bow. Before we do that, connect, cut, connect, and connect. Okay, perfect. Uh, gotcha. This also needs a cut that way. Perfect. Then we can M co at center. Perfect. All right, so that's a good start. Now, basically, we want a few more kind of starting. These ones would be the larger uh, cuts or curls. Actually, we'll take this and rip it. So we can do kind of a one of these. Just get a nice little detail. Oh, excuse me. Just gotta play the tune to let the burp out. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of a placeholder. I'm gonna delete it. Yeah, because we're just we're just gonna fill it in right now. All right, so one, two, just the one here. Extrude it up. I think we can just go ahead and connect it. 
do two cuts or just one cut here. Perfect. Now we can grid fill, hopefully. Nope, that's all right. We can just do bridge edge loops. No, bridge edge loops, no merge. Cut right there. Let's merge these vertices M at the center. There we go. All right. Now, something like curls is happening. We'll definitely want to get more sharpness out of it than we currently have. Something just a little bit crispier. I'm going to do a cut here. Oops. J. Polymap with the eyeballs <laughs> looks kind of haunting. <laughs> These ones, <laughs> the really, really detailed eyes. <laughs> just every this just kind of blank face and outline of the sphere's composition. Not sure what it's called. When you made it transparent, gotcha. Yeah, the little floating eyeballs. <laughs> He's there looking at you. Got your eyeballs floating around your skull. Let's do a cut right here. Oops, like that, like this. Bam. Make pupils where all the lines overlap look spooky. <laughs> I'll just show. I'll show you more and more detail. Show it to you in more detail a little later because it is. They do, There are actual pupils there. So you're kind of right on the money. Set this to eighty. Oh yeah, now we're getting some some curls. Yeah, look at that. Sharp. I guess we could do a sharp here too. Yeah, that gives it a really nice curl. Okay. Most definitely we will do that. <laughs> the ghost eyeball. Now I've set it up so if I go in here. Uh, the eyeballs, it's kind of a, a real eyeball in the sense where if I go there, I can uh, hide this and you can see that it, it is actually a little sphere. And I've got this little thing here set up where I can do this, do a little bit of this and that, and then a little bit of this. It's all kind of this. <laughs> Zoomies mode, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oops, that's a negative value. Don't want that. Well, it's look, looks pretty good so far. My cat's yelling. Looks. Good.
Zvirchen have the ability to adjust pupils as like an emote thing, or does it have to be set for the model? Um, so uh, on Quest, that would be pretty hard to do, but on PC, you can you can you're very flexible, um, and you can definitely make a uh, a pupil dilate option. A few different ways to do that, but definitely definitely achievable. On PC, I'm honestly not even sure what Quest is still. <laughs> it's the it's the headset. Um, so like uh, it's that right there. Sorry, my cat's right there. But yeah, it's just the the headset. Um, come say hi. She's going to sit there and yell, and she can come say hi. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Stinky kitty. <laughs> Too fuzzy. Okay, so she's off. She's running. Got kitty cat things to do. It's a pretty good start. Exile to the stink zone. <laughs> yes, indeed. I love her, but sometimes she's just a little stinky. So it looks to me like there's a very distinct little lip here. There are quite a few of the drawings have that lip right there. Oops. So I want to make sure that that's in there. I guess I'm kind of bouncing around now on what to work on, but get uh, the face looking correct. It's always this kind of give and take with 3D work where it's like you work on one spot till it looks right, then you work on something else, and then when you come back and look at the initial work you did, it looks a little different because it's all like contextual in a way. You need the full picture to really know what's going on. Okay. Looks like we can get a little curve right there. Nice little swoop. A swoop. And then move it. So. Mm. Sometimes in games with really fancy character creators, I do that. Like, adjust one bit, and I look at the whole face, something looks wrong, but I can't tell what it is. It's so frustrating. Well, faces are, faces are hard. It's just like, the more you look at a face, the weirder faces get sometimes.
And then I think these eyebrows are too intense. We need ridges for the eyes. Perhaps not as noticeable. It's kind of cartoonish right now. I mean, it's all cartoonish, but just a little too strong. So we'll do that. Do this. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then bring this guy back. Yes, much better. And I think the sharp, it's usually the uh, nose or eyebrows, I think. <laughs> I just dissolve this, dissolve that, and then just crease this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. And then mark sharp there. Now we've got the eyeball eye crease, eyeball crease. That way. We could probably do with another subdivision right there. Right there. What kind of loops? Oh, it goes all the way down there. We'll figure that one out. But I think we will need a little bit more at some point. And then, although there's a strong eyebrow ridge from this side, the face still has Pretty soft front part while those eyes. <laughs> Can you use hand tracking controllers without a headset? I think that's what I'd like to do. I was just playing with M and K before. Um, I'm not sure what M and K is, but they did add, if you have a Quest headset, you can use, uh, oh, mouse keyboard, of course. Um, there, It's pretty custom at the moment. They did just add something where you can use hand tracking if you have a Quest headset, but it doesn't link to your PC yet. Um, so there's some options out there. The really the main hand tracking uh, are with the index controllers. That's usually the what people use. There's some other options out there, but that one's the most common. Um, and that actually has like finger tracking. Um, but as for hand tracking, just like your general hand position, that's uh, if you have a VR headset, it's going to do that. Any VR controllers track your hand position. Uh, so, yeah, if that's what you mean. Because sometimes hand tracking refers to your finger movements, like getting your fingers to articulate. But just where your hands are in the world, any VR headset should be able to do that. Apparently, if you use the hand things but not the headset, it will be incredibly hard to look around, which I can foresee being a problem. Well, use the hand things but not, not the headset. Very hard to look around it being a problem. You mean using the, the controllers without a headset? That would be a challenge. Um, yeah, that would certainly be a challenge. Have to move the use the mouse to move your POV. Yeah, I'd seen people point and stuff. I wasn't sure how they did that. Um, yeah, when you're in VR, it's it's pretty much just matching your your view. Most people, if you're if you have VR, you're just using the VR controllers and VR headset. You know, there's no, you're not using you're using those together. You're not just using one of the other. 
if I understand your question correctly. Do, do, do. I do have a line here. It would be handy to just do that. And I do have I can put another cut here. But yeah, and if you're if you're in VR. And you have index controllers, like you can get your full hand articulation, anything you could do with your hands, point, rock out, all that stuff. Uh, it's just, it's pretty crazy how accurate it can all get after, if, if you've got the, if you got the money for it. <laughs> The snoot, you got the snoot. Welcome, Kyle, right? Ah, okay, I see what's going on, okay. So the reason it's the, the face isn't this floof isn't for, forward enough like this. This will make him look more like sheep, sheep like her, a Malamut, like that. Yes. Yes, I see now. Gotcha. Um, how do you move around while in VR? Like walk or is it on the controllers? So the controllers do have the joysticks just like a, a game a uh, video game, so you can move with that. Uh, you can also physically walk. Uh, usually people just kind of stand and move around in the space that they're in. Um, so they don't, they don't walk very far, maybe like within a space of three feet. Uh, but if technically, if you had an open field and you had the right equipment, you could just actually walk everywhere, <laughs> which I think is super cool. Um, like I could kind of see as VR gets bigger, like, uh, public parks becoming a very much a like VR congregation space, um, because it'd just be very useful, uh, to have the ability to have the space to do everything you want to do. I know they have those VR AR experiences where you'd like in an escape room or something and they actually really just gray foam, but it looks like a dungeon or something to you. Uh, yes, uh, I haven't done one of those myself, but there is one in the 10 in my town. Just haven't gone to it yet. Um, and those are certainly convincing in their way. But uh, yeah, it's interesting all the different things you can do in VR because some people do this thing called infinite walking. And what they do is they, they don't use their thumbsticks, but they still are in just like a normal room, like my room right now. And they just walk and then physically turn and rotate their play space at the same time. So play space is like the, your virtual orientation. 
So they're changing the way the, the virtual world is rotated while they're physically moving in order to keep themselves in a straight line, walking in a straight line in the virtual world. A lot of time I use the VR headset, so I'm playing super hot VR and it makes my entire body jerk when something hits the volume up. My brain got so confused. <laughs> well, then you'll have a great time in VR because uh, phantom sense is definitely a thing for, for people. Uh, that's where you, you feel interaction and uh, people use that to the as uh, to maximum effect maximum effect <laughs> and i even had a normal video games like a pov thing the forehead tingle if something clips with your camera yeah i think you'll you'll enjoy vr then because that's definitely a big part of it um i mean not like a essential part just in the sense that it's quite a it's it's not, i wouldn't say necessarily a common phenomena it doesn't this i don't really get that feeling uh phantom sense i mostly get vertigo in like a good way I really like the feeling of vertigo um But like, like a lot of furry communities and stuff, it's like people touching their ears and stuff and they can feel their virtual ears as long as they have eye contact with that interaction. Um, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it is. So now we got this one. Oops. I don't need such things. I feel it all with my heart. <laughs> do you mean that you don't get virtual? Do you mean that you do get phantom sense or you don't get phantom sense? I wonder if they'll add like vibrations to headsets or someone touching you eventually, assuming it doesn't already exist. There are haptic vests. Um, that exist, but they're not necessarily like high resolution. I get phantom sense, heat sense, etc. Oh, interesting. Um, so there are some haptic uh, stuff for it, but it's uh, it's it's pricey. Um, it's almost cheaper to just train your phantom sense. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just get really good at making your brain do all the work for you. And then you don't have to you don't have to pay for it at all. It does sound like something an anime detective would use. <laughs> I think, yeah, you're yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're you are not wrong. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. <laughs> there, there could be some really good comedy skits. That uh play on that that idea that play on that idea <laughs> you can tell where ghosts are but you can't see them or communicate with them so it's useless <laughs>
Oops. Oh, interesting. Grabbed multiple there. So it seems a little bit too tall right now. I'm gonna set object origin to geometry. A little bit like that. Just a little bit smaller. About there. And then I'm gonna get this one be the tuft that kind of goes straight up. Like that. And then one final one here to do this one. Yeah, most of my, a lot of my chatters uh, are also into VR chat, clearly. Um, so I think you're in, you're in good company here. So right now you are just playing on mouse and keyboard, uh, Damien. Started playing to attend a friend's birthday party, basically. Oh, that's really cool. That's pretty fun. I could totally see that becoming a kind of a big way people get introduced. It's like it's like Zoom, but better. <laughs> that's looking pretty good. Let's get in there and do some sharpening. Basically, everyone there had a custom model, and I was like default cartoon raccoon, so I wanted my own lamo. <laughs> That's how it begins. <laughs> Yeah, the, um, it's quite a big furry community on VR chat. And it's just cool to see there's, I would say that they have just some wildly inventive um, avatars. It's just so cool to see all the different approaches people have to VR. Of course, it's, uh, anime characters are wild, uh, huge on, um, unsurprisingly, on VR. Some of them had like thighs bigger than their torsos and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, inflation's been a problem. <laughs> a problem. <laughs> Thighflation. Can't watch them run around with imagine this flat flat Sneak. <laughs> I guess I've seen that meme. I'm trying to sneak around with it. It's sound of my ass clapping is alerting the guards. <laughs>
All right. That is a good start. Let's go ahead and start on the back of the hair too. I'll just look in here. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm super interested to see what the like trends for VR are going to be in like, like even just two years, you know, I, there's this really funny phenomenon that's happening right now in a VR chat where people are, people's avatars are generally getting smaller because people have enjoyed feeling shorter than the people around them, but then other people want to be shorter, so then they get a little shorter, which in turn makes the other person want a shorter avatar, and it just kind of perpetuates where people are slowly shrinking because it's all relative to the people they're standing next to, <laughs> um, which I find hilarious. <laughs> but I, I'm also pretty keen to know what people will what other similar similar phenomena are going to happen in the next few years. I can see just the furry population exploding. And I suppose anime as well, but it's not in the same way. The same. Coevolution, <laughs> exactly. Lux. Cat's yelling again. This one is really tucked away in the ear. That's kind of a problem. Not a problem. You just want to move it to be visible. You don't want to waste the geometry. What's going on there? This is an odd. Okay, we need to get rid of that. Something's a little wrong here. Do do do. Should go like this actually. No. Gotcha. This is wrong. And this one is there. Also, now dissolve this and run a cut this way. All right, there we go. See, a lot of avatars that I wouldn't necessarily call anime, but they're like cartoon girls wearing Gucci. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Like e girls or something, but without anime eyes or hair, so it's distinct. Yes, there's definitely a lot of of e-girls in uh in vr chat uh it's kind of become a, a lot yeah they're like they're like pseudo anime they're definitely anime inspired but they aren't like anime like a cartoon they're just they're more like a doll doll anime like second life imports or something not quite realistic quite realistic but definitely not full anime. yeah i definitely have seen those that was a very good way to describe it, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of those. Um, 
I think it's it's kind of hitting a a saturation point in my mind where people are it's just kind of the the standard so, like a very standard aesthetic now um for better or worse I don't think it's wrong to to like that aesthetic um I'm just I think that because it's becoming kind of everywhere that that will naturally make people want something else <laughs> there's a lot of people there are just like little cartoon animals or memes they're like 20 feet tall wall <laughs> yeah i remember hopping into a server and it was just like all the titans from attack on titan they're just ginormous walking around and then of course it's just like a child on the microphone <laughs> oh no Oh, that's nice. I don't like that at all. Um, okay, we'll do a cut. There. This is just an awkward spot to have that, I suppose. So I'll just go this way. This way. I always thought movies about the Matrix and equivalents in the future were goofy because they always have a ton of people with wacky avatars, but that's absolutely a thing people like doing. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Like People don't really always want to be... like, serious. You know, they just want to have... be, like, kind of unbothered in their... They just, they just want to be fun, funny, in a way. There's, there's a one very popular one. It's like a little frog in a go-kart. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, that one really blew up. Really, really blew up. Kind of the first time VR chat entered main, mainstream internet in a way. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let's try to auto smooth again. Oh, I think I'll probably set up a normal blend so there's no harsh line here. It will just blend smoothly into the head. Thank you. 
actually want to delete this edge here. Love the shape of the hair, but I think it's slightly too big overall when compared to his ears. Yeah, I do think some general sizing will need to happen. It'll be a little bit easier once we get the everything else into place. Like a, I don't think his ears are quite done either. For this here, get this point. This point. It's always kind of an odd question on how to make that shape. All right, well, we'll go the other way. We'll just go ahead and connect this, this, cut it this way. Perfect. And we can go ahead and just collapse these two. Voila. Okay. Now that's better. Yeah, definitely a little too big. And then the ears themselves are also a little big. Where's that other image? Or here. Oh, excuse me. Here's this part here. It does need to come over a little bit like that so we can get. Just a little curve on the inside. Yeah. And then I'll shrink them just a little, move them down, move them in. The base here. here. So go ahead and lift it up. Yeah, definitely looking more dog-like, more Malamute now than before, which is good. And then for the hair, I'm going to move the center of it to, actually, no, we won't put it on the hair, we'll go to the head, and we'll make this the center. There. Object set origin to cursor, then that way we can shrink it. And it will kind of stay in, stay in place. Are you telling me it like Malamute to be funny? <laughs> I can't tell. Well, <laughs> isn't that the comparison you made? Malamute? Oh, am I saying it like Malamute? <laughs> I, that's the only way I know how to say it. Is that Malamute? Malamute?
Malamute. Malamute. Like you'd mute the sound. Malamute. 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 I don't know. It's hard for me to say it like that. That might just be a, an accent thing. That's just why my, my brain wants to say it Malamute. Malamute. Yeah, I'll probably still say end up saying Malamute all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just just how I say it. <laughs> but I don't mind if it's funny. Let's raise this up right here. I want a little bit more the taper from the neck to the sh to the to this part. Won't go like that. Yes, yes. Just a nicer transition. I'll push it back on this side a little. Oh, excuse me. Mm, I want to keep that straight. I actually don't know until super recently that Mountain Boots and Huskies aren't the same thing. So who am I to talk like now? <laughs> They're pretty similar. As I understand, it's like a, an Asian dog breed, kind of like a. I forget the other one starts with a J. Very smart doggos. Shoop. <laughs> they do commonly get bred together. Little triangles and funny. Kind of be nice if This point went this way, like that. Yeah, and that way I have a line. Or I will have a line that goes all the way over, around the face. I like that. We can just kind of clean this up a little. That. Go ahead and collapse this one. Uh, 
and this one. Oops. No, that's a little too much. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard to know what the best to polish is something. Don't have curved tails. They have poofy straight ones like foxes, but they curl when they wag them. Oh. Was it the silver foxes? There was like a breeding program for them to see if people, to see if they could become domesticated. Uh, and it worked well, but the more domesticated they became, the curlier their tails got, which is kind of funny. I suppose this all comes together like that. All right, better. Now the face kind of goes around the jaw. I like that. I like it a lot. Like it a lot. And then here, this is kind of odd. It looks like it's been carved that way. If we could kind of separate this just a little, maybe like that. Hmm. We'll come back to that. That's gonna be a little difficult. I'm probably just add some tufts, tufts manually. All right. Man, I wish I had more Red Bull. But it's a little too late in the day for that. Musculature, musculature, malamusculature. I'm going to take these two spots, crease them. The malamutskulls. Got them Malamute schools. Nice. That's looking pretty good. Make the thighs a little bit thicker, especially around the knee. The knee's a little bit thin right now. Let's go ahead and hit this. Boom, boom. Yes. A little bit like that. And also here. Actually, this one. Little. Perfect. Now for the face, what we want to make sure of is that we want to add a lip, right? We'll have, well, of course, there will be a lip. We just want to make sure it's ready to be unwrapped. Oh, I need to get the teeth too. 
go grab that. There we go, another cut. Give some lip, lip some form there. Move this forward. Do, 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 do. Do 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 uh, bumpiness with just a texture where it looks like it's 3D. Like a wrap situation or not? Is it more like painting? Uh, so yes, um, in the sense that you use an image to kind of make, so you you, uh, you can kind of paint it like you would a painting program, but the effect you can get will actually react with light in a way that gives it depth and it looks like it's, it's catching the light of something. Uh, So it's not it's not like painting a shadow and, and that shadow's like baked into it or it doesn't it's not dynamic in any way. Um, so you can actually get like it'll look like its form, like it's actual um, actually indented into the skin. Um, not not just uh, painted on, but actually reactive. Move the nostril around a little bit so we can get feathers. This kind of look. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, uh, we have an extra line. Let's dissolve it. Dissolve edge. And I'm going to go to sculpt mode. And smooth it. Just a little smoother. Delete it one more time. All right, 
a little more stylized. I like them. Maybe a little big. It's a little stretched this way. I want to kind of up a little bit and just a wee bit. bit and then making that the reference most canine noses are definitely a little bit square Square. Three fifty. He's right here, it's creating an odd bump. You could dissolve this. I could also use it to my advantage. There we go. Perfect. Okie doke. Ooh. Oh.
Sorry, it's kind of spacing out right now. As you do. As you do. All right. I think the arms need to be longer. Let me go ahead and grab the point right here. So then we can grab the whole arm and do 0 0.6. Don't need that much. Have something like that. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah, a little bit smaller. And then this section right here. Oh, I feel so congested. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, this came out a little more warped than I wanted to redo this. Come back to those. <laughs> It's the best way to add that, I think. Do this. Like that. They can actually dissolve in this spot here. But now this here will be the actual crease or the clothing. Hmm. 
Oh, not for the day. Yeah, okay. Anyway, back, back to here. Grab this one, crease it, bevel it. Perfect. Then crease both of those. these up and scooch this over so I can move it out all right but now we have geometry we need there to actually have a another oh uh, what fold wrinkle how to describe it wrinkle fold wrinkle fold And then take the sleeve, delete it, and replace it with a circle. A perfect circle, which I actually need to remake because this has to be eight vertices. Very important. Come back to the tail. Okay. Next, let's do tail time. Oh, just want to rename it. Where? 
bring it on there. So. And then the cube. No. Circle again. Add that subdivision. And grid fill. Perfect. Maybe a little squished. That. A little bit bigger. I'm actually going to put the origin right here. So I can scale it like this. Scale it with the reference image. Right about there. Yeah, because it looks like it goes mid back. So it's about as big as it should be, right around there. Alright. And I think we'll need to lower. There. What's this? Hair. Bone. We will need to lower the tail itself. Or no. No. We can actually just take that, extrude it. That'll be where it attaches. That. Perfect. So I want to go ahead and do is delete. Half of this. And then just combine it with the body. Boom. <coughs> Excuse me. And then bridge edge loops. Merge. Voila. When it comes to vertex count, we're doing super good. Definitely right around where we want to be. Excuse me. Goodness, this feels so burpy. Wow, they've just been eating so much veggie and stuff too. Why? Don't know why. Four thousand more vertices, so anyone looks at me and dies instantly. <laughs> Behold me and 
and despair. So, some more fur to make. In fact, let's go ahead and make our template fur object. So, we'll do subdivision. And just one extrusion? I think so. Yeah. Smooth it. No, two. Then we'll add a mirror for now. Probably remove that a little bit later. Then a, my favorite, a vertex, no wait, where is it? Data transfer from the body. We're gonna transfer our normal data. Nearest face interpolated. And then we need a UV group for this. So we'll do this. Yeah. And we add that to our modifier. Perfect. And then we'll make a group here called Toplo Fur. All right. I'm actually going to make a whole backup copy right now. Yes. Because. Awesome. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start moving this around. So basically we're going to be making the chest fur right now. Right there. So we'll take this. And it's pretty easy. Just kind of position it. Way that looks like it matches the reference. The nice part is the normals are blending. What does that mean? That means right here. They just kind of blend it directly with the body. Just super handy. Because that way you can make fur that looks good, but you still get to keep all the shapes you want to use. All right. There's one little tuft. And we'll rotate this one. Actually, duplicate it. Rotate it. Move it down. No. Let's duplicate this one. My voice time. Just do that. Bada boom. Yeah, fuck it. Boom, boom. Yeah. 
So for some of these, the middle ones, we do want to turn off the mirror. Otherwise, we have double the amount for no reason. There we go. Okay. Some fur tufts. Tufts. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's see what that looks like with the clothing. Perfect. Almost correctly positioned. Almost. Perfect. It's okay if it clips through a little bit. That's always something we can fix after modeling. Okay. We only got about another 45 minutes and then I will be Ending the stream for the week. I will be back Monday. Ah, wrong spot. All right. Perfect. Thank you. 
Uh, noise. So now we still have the sway a little bit right on the forearm. A bit of that. Crease it, bevel it, expand it. Crease it, fill it, indent it. Extrude it. Bop it. Bop it. Increase this here. Make sure this one is at zero. Actually, I'm going to delete that one because I don't think we need it. I'm just going to extrude the zipper at this point. E yeah. That might be a little bit too much. I can always do that middle indent just with textures instead. But for now, I like it. All right. Now, there is a hood. So to make that, I'm going to take this part and extrude it. Actually, should have gone the other way. This should go out. Yeah. That.
what's going on here? Do, 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 do. Right. Quickly racking up vertices now to that 70k maximum. I'm just gonna change the hue of this a little bit. Object. Well, actually, if I do material, can't I still go down here? Viewport. Oh, perfect. Okay. Works. So we can do dark color for the body and a bluer color. Alrighty then. And for the eyes, we are going to go ahead. Four twenty seven. Thirty more minutes.
Let's put a solidifier on this one. Dun, dun, dun. Then we want to make these little straps here. Looks like there's four of them. There. And so this would be one. Mm -hmm. It actually be easier to go the other way. Interesting. What I need to do is add another cut here. Up there. Then bevel like that, merge these. I want that. Just want these. Perfect. Bevel. Right about there. Merge and last. Do. 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 All right. Then. Grease. Decrease. And I still want to look that up. Decrease. Origin of that word is interesting to me. All right, then for these ones, Face, extrude face along this. All right. Well, go ahead and bring up these edges again. Do, 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 do. Crease. So close. Two. Perfect. All right. Scale them to be the right size. And voila, we've got our straps. Nice. I think we'll just dissolve these top ones. That looks a little bad. I think we decrease them for sure. That's not bad, okay. Um, so, dissolve, crease. There we go. Yes, that's what we want. <clears throat> nice, all right. So that came out well. Next fun step is we can go ahead and mark them sharp. That's a nice way to make the object pop visually. So mark sharp.
phone. Awkward. I want to be able to grab that crease, but I can't. But I can't. All right, looks good. Now, I want the pocket. I want to make a pocket here. Let's crease it, extrude it, decrease it. Noise, that looks good. So moved these fur objects into the correct collection. There we go. All right, all right, all right. So good progress has been made today. Very good progress. I am actually going to dissolve this crease here, or delete this one. Boom. Ping. What the dog doing? Dog of things. Dog of things. Oops. And we've got that crease going and this these two creases as well. All right, clothing's looking sharp. I'll add the zippers later, probably one day. I'm going to adjust the topology here. I'm going to make a cut like this. So that I can now have a more adjustability. Ah, 
awesome. That being said, this is kind of awkward. I'd rather have something that kind of goes, touches the skin and then goes in. So we'll try this again. Not with the front though, just this portion. Move it in. And then to the side. The same thing. I think we need a crease here, though. Yeah, that does. That looks a lot better without the crease. All right. So we only have about 15 minutes left in the stream. So I'm just going to start identifying things that we'll be doing Monday. If it's your first time here at the stream, welcome. Uh, feel f we make VR chat avatars here. <laughs> interested in following along, please hit that like button. I'm here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. No, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central, working away, making avatars. So if it's something you, that interests you, please follow along. Oh, well, thank you, Frofredor. <laughs> the packs be peeking. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, there's We have other ways of hiding, hiding things later. And set that to zero. Boom. What's going on there? I gotcha. Okay, so this we fill. What just happened? Hope you had a, a good Thanksgiving, Sam. Thank you. Same to you, Frofredor. Got to spend some time with friends and family. Eat some turkey, of course. Hope you had a wonderful one as well. What did you get up to? Got lots of leftovers, ideal. It's definitely the I ideal result of a Thanksgiving. Good. That's good. Oh, there is a little gap here. Gotcha. Okay. You need to make another zipper. Zipper two. Zippy. Sequel.
All right, we got most of the modeling done though. Mm. All of it. Oh no, I already have this image in here. Let's get bring it forward. So we do have pockets. Pockets. Just kind of tweak it a little, do my own thing with the pocket. Crease, extrude, decrease. Wrinkles are hard. <laughs> Usually I just like to do them as textures. It's a little bit simpler that way. Little bit simpler. I do want to learn how to make, excuse me, um, like just simulate them and then turn it into like a subdivision. I don't know if, I, th I think it might not work how I imagine it though. But if I could just do some simple kind of simulation to make like cloth simulation to actually make wrinkles, that would be nice. But don't know how doable that is. That looks pretty good. Dun, 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 dun. All right, what's left? So I'm gonna just take some notes. We want to get the Cheek fluff, cheek fluff, cheek fluff. <laughs> There's a word there. Looks like cheek puff, but that's okay. Uh, tail, of course. Circle things. Um, and then from the front, zipper. The zipper is important. Zipper. And then I guess we'll want strings as well. Strings. And what else? What else? That looks pretty much done. We need to get this part kind of clear on what's going on there. Give it a trim there. Um, oh, the hair, of course. Uh, Hair is not done. Hair. And that's, that's a good start. I'm sure I'll notice more things when I come back on Monday. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, I just want to say thank you for joining me this week. I hope everyone's had a good week. Happy Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving if you're celebrating. If not, that's okay. <laughs> but I just want to thank everyone for hanging out with me. Ferofedor, Damien, who else came by this afternoon? Pat Omri. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I hope you all have an amazing weekend. I'll see you Monday. I'll be back Monday for sure. And we'll just kind of uh, pick up right where we left off. And we should be getting to another avatar next week, hopefully. And I'm uh, looking forward to that. But I hope you have a good one as well, Frofedor, Damien, Kyomri, anyone lurking. You all have an amazing weekend. See you Monday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Same to you. Enjoy your night. Have a good night, Damien. Bye, y'all.